All right. Hard luck. Ah, oh, excitement. Rod got what we call a spread for, for anglers that are new to the trolling side of things. There's a lot of terminology to learn, as well as some key parts of trolling, like how far you position your lures behind the boat, the speeds you go, and stuff like that. So we're trolling with skirted or, or pusher-style lures yep, today. They, right, yeah. they got a good bait fish profile. They dig into the water, skip out, and they throw what we call a, a big bubble trail or smoke, yep, smoke trail. So good, very, very attractive for fish down deep coming up. Talk us through the terminology and the spread that you're using at the moment. Basically, um, we'll run generally a spread of five. Yep. Um, if you're on your own or you're limited in your you know, number of people on the vessel, then you might run less. You can even only necessarily run three rods or even two rods, but the general spread that we'll run, short corner, that's your closest lure, approximately 15 to 20 meters back, short rigger, run just behind that, so about 25 to 30 meters back, depending on the amount of wash. Your long corner, 20 meters, 25 meters back. Your long rigger, approximately 10 meters beyond that, so probably 30 to 35 meters back. And then your shotgun. Shotgun, furthest back, 40 to 50 meters. Bait fish like this is literally just a predatory magnet. You can actually see one predatory fish there, marking up and you can see the, you know, what, how the bait is reacting to it. It might be a dolphin fish, it might be a marlin, uh, it might even be a dolphin, but we haven't seen any dolphins on the surface. So yeah, basically, that is just an absolute, I'd guess that would be pilchards, just because of the density of the, sh of the shoal. But working that two or three times would be a really good idea instead of just driving over it and then you know, leaving it. If there's a fish there, and you don't get it on two or three passes, then generally, you know, there may not be a fish or it's so focused on the bait that it won't come up for your lures. And then, you, could, you know, if you had a live bait, that's a secondary resource, put the live bait into it and see if they'll eat it then. Go for it, Bill. Good Billy. Work Billy. Got the shotgun mate, way out the back. Way out the back. Dion just made a colour change. Oh yeah. There we go, starting to get a bit active. So fishing one of Roderick's pushes, skirted lure, way out back, seven knots. And Roderick's been working up the top deck there, looking for bait, looking for signs of current lines in the water, it's, it's a very active pursuit. It's not something where you just throw lures out the back, hope for the best. That's why Roderick catches a lot of fish. He's always got that fish brain engaged. Also, a really good trick when you want to land a bullfish quickly, as soon as you hook him, try and get down current of the fish. As with the bird, a bird has to fly into the wind if he wants to conserve energy. Exactly the same with a fish. If you pull him down current, he has to keep swimming otherwise he'll sink. So we try and get the boat down current of the fish and that way it ties, out, ties the fish out a lot quicker and you can get a release. And don't be shy if, it's, if line's peeling off the reel, that's good. You just keep that constant pressure and, and be, you know, don't be, be too aggressive, but as, you know, constant pressure, it's, it's, it's better than what you're doing with the rod. Fishing around tide turn at the moment as well. Uh, Good strategy is you, you want to be fishing when the, the fish are most likely to bite. And a lot of people will chase, you know, not just marlin, but a lot of pelagics will, will tell you that around those tide turns, the fish, the bait gets active, the fish, the predators get active. You often see the birds get a bit more active as well. There he is, straight out the back. Come from back. Up he comes.
there you have it, three times the boat. And it's been on the leader and just one tough fish. See you what? It's obviously made it a bit easier too, you know, you're not, you're not using seriously heavy gear. This is probably what we class the light, light to medium. Yeah. Now you've got, a, you've got a live fibre from the Wilson Stable, Texalian, 8 to 10 kilo light overhead stick, 15 kilo Stren Mono, and an 80, 80 pound leader on the end of that. Now that's for the abrasion resistance. Yeah. It's a Which very is... neat little outfit. You can chase them on spin gear, but you know, the, the benefit of this is you can have a little bit more authority at times. And if you do, you, as yeah. I said before, you do want to put the fish back. It's not a bad option. Go. Dion leader. Oh. Unfortunately, it was hooked fairly gently, and uh, Dion was a bit, bit cautious about going heavy on it, which is fair enough. And we have pulled that out. And the good thing is, though, that fish hasn't been worn out too much. Dion's bought the lure that did the damage. The fish has swum away, and it was just one of those things. And the benefit of using your eyes as you're trying to land fish to see how well that hook is set. That's the reason Dion said, "Boys, I ain't going too heavy on this because I can see that that's very gingerly hooked." and uh, that fish was pretty good at getting down the current and working its way against us, so it's found a way to wear that out, and that's marlin fishing for you. They, uh, they bite well, and they get off very well as well. Well, the landed fish, once he's, once he's landed, she's landed, so. Or we'll count it. Yeah, count it. I'd like to have it here next time, right, mate? That's all right, <laughs> that is marlin fishing for you. Hooks are good. Billy's a bit tired. Drinks for Billy, and lures back out, Roderick. Yeah, mate, we'll get him straight we'll back out and see if we can get another one. All right. So we've already spoken about the various positions, the short corner, long corner, etc. But what lures do we run in those various positions? So we need to look at specific faces um, to run it at each distance in your wash. These are all light tackle lures. We've been fishing light tackle. So, you know, your juvenile black marlin, striped marlin, mahi mahi, wahoo tuna, smaller profile lures. On the short corner, we'll start with the short corner, it's the closest lure. We like to run something with a darker color, so black and purple, purple, uh, you know, black and reds. But more importantly, a nice wide cupped face. So a lot more air, a lot more bubble trail, but also very importantly, a stable lure. One thing to bear in mind with this shape lure, it will dive a bit deeper. And if it's run close in next to the boat, you do want a lure that does just pop under the surface a little bit further, making it a bit more visible for the fish. So short corner, a nice cup face lure like that. And also with the hooks we run on them, they're a light gauge stainless steel hook. So you're not having to change hooks every few sessions because they're rusting. It's a good nice thin gauge hook and we rig these on a shackle rig. So if we get a hook that's damaged or we get a bite from a fish, we land the fish, we've got a, a, a tip rolled over on a point. It's just a case of loosening the shackle and put it on another rig. We can actually make those rigs up spare, so we've got spare rigs like so. What I like to do is I like to run my, my hooks at approximately 60 degrees. Um, that stabilizes your lure. Those hooks run like that in the water column. Obviously, they'll roll slightly as they turn, but they'll generally stay up at that angle. And, and the reasoning behind that is, is if that fish comes up and turns left or right when he eats your lure, you have a better chance of hooking him. There is also, um, with slant face style lures that have got a more erratic action through your wake, you know, guys will run them at 180. Um, guys run single hooks. Some guys run them stiff rigged. Some guys run them semi stiff rigged like that. It's all a personal preference. Horses for courses, um, you ask, 10 different captains, you'll get 10 different answers. But, you know, that's how we run on, that, on this boat, and, and we've got a reasonably good strike rate, so we stick to it. As we go back in our lure spread, long corner, you can still run a cup face lure. You can see that one's got a slightly bigger cup, a little bit of a taper, also a different color. You can run him on your long corner, or even go to something with a, with a, a, a different head. This shaped head is a new shaped head called a beer gut. Um, it works exceptionally well in rough water. 
They make a really good tight bubble trail, but they hold in. So when you've got choppy, rough conditions, this shape head holds in the water really well, and, um, and you want that lure to stay in. So once again, you know, you can run that on your long corner or even one of your riggers. And as you move further back in your spread, the further back you go, the skinnier you make those lures. So, you know, two lure shapes, two lure shapes there. You can see the two difference in those two heads. So I'd be running that lure there on my shotgun or on my long rigger further back in the spread. Um, the longer, skinnier nose, she's still got a bit of a cup to it, but they've got a bit of a, a bit of a weaving, a bit of a weaving action. Skinnier profile. They're not making as much noise in the water. So, so those fish that are a little bit shy, you know, they'll still come and bite that lure, hopefully. And also, further back in the spread, maybe a little bit more of a natural color, blue over silver. And then we've got um, a lure that's wide, widely renowned across a lot of bullfish fisheries, and that's a Lumo sprocket. This is a micro sprocket. Um, as again, same hook, 60 degrees, and tapered head. You can actually see all the, all the bill marks on on this one, it's, it's caught quite a few fish already. But a good additive as well is the addition of jets to a lure. So holes down the center of the lure. What that'll do is it might make even more bubble or disturbance in the water. But what it also does is it forces water through your lure and it'll open the skirt. So, so making the skirt and the lure look a bit more lively in the water. So, you know, guys are always thinking about these lures. So that's the basics of those light tackle lures. From a cup face all the way to a long skinny profile. And if you're getting bites, the fish aren't hooking up or they're really tentative bites, you can go to something even smaller. And, um, and that's, you know, in, in the large scope of lure fishing, that's a really small lure to catch a marlin, one would think. But extremely successful lure on the shotgun, small lure, long skinny head, and, and that lure is just full of bull marks from previous catches of marlin. So, you know, small lure right at the back, and as you come into your spread, bigger lures. And that's basically the, the strategy of, of, of your, your marlin fishing trolling. Bigger, noisier lures in close, smaller, skinnier lures out back. <laughs> oh, look at that. There he goes. Another one of the crew on the rods now, Lenny. I released him from the depths of the boat to come and have some fun. <laughs> That's it. Get a colour there, mate. There we go. Here we go. He looks like he's heading for surface again. Here he comes. Woo! Oh yes. That shotgun's done the trick. He on changed colour for you a while back, mate, and they've been smashing it ever since. Look at the colours of that tail. Magnificent fish in the water. Those blues. both side now and the thing we want to do is we want to release this fish the less we handle it the better and we've got Dion all keyed up to get his hands on the leader we don't want to anger this fish too much we want to quickly get a hold of that bill remove hooks and let it go too good a fish to catch only once Thanks, nice. This one's G'd up, ready to go. We are going to get it back in the water very, very soon. Little tip when you're handling them, glove, get a hold of that bill and support the weight of them as 
much as you can. So there are a few tips with handling them. As little as, little as you can is best. Well done, mate. Let's get back in the water. We're too puffed. He's got some water. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show. And if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.